Diana Demerick here. Ra, ra, ra. Welcome back for another little Huga live chat. Not across the kitchen table today, I'm here in my office. If you've ever had a private session with me, you will recognise the shake here pom pom sign. Uh, anyway, a, a few things today. Uh, I want to uh, talk about uh, emotions and fear. Do you do you cry? Uh, and also to, to keep things light, where we're, we're not going to delve uh, too deep. And I have a mystery kitchen object, and I'm really looking forward to seeing if anybody can guess what this is because I didn't know what this was. Uh, but anyway, more, more, more on that later. You can have a wee think about that. I'll get. I'll give you some clues. But, but back to what I want to talk about today is um, do you do you cry? When, when was the last time you cried? That came up for me at the weekend and as usual in my uh, videos you're, you're never going to escape uh, talk about uh, exercising, getting in some daily exercise and uh, the winter swimming. I, I took part in, in uh, an ice swimming challenge. Woohoo! Go me! Here's a medal. And a lot of emotions came up for me on, on Saturday. And, and I thought I would talk about it today because these emotions can come up. It doesn't have to be in an ice swimming challenge. It can be with, with facing things at home, facing things at work. And it, for me, I, I very, very seldom cry. I, I, I'm, I'm not a, a crier. It, when, when I cry, it's usually because I'm feeling um, not overwhelmed, that, that it doesn't come out in that way. Uh, usually if I'm feeling very, very angry, it will, it will come out as tears. And usually the person that I'm most angry with is myself. <laughs> that, that, that's when, when the tears will come. And I can say to you, probably in the last year, I've cried five times, four or five times. I, I can have tears, happy tears, but actually, you know, the, the kind of sobs, um, that that's a very very uh, seldom thing that comes up for me. Maybe you are maybe you're different. Maybe you cry a lot. My friend V because she cries a lot, and I, I, I remember I think Carol seeing it in the dressing of truth thing. You know the uh, like the Myers Briggs of, of color analysis that type twos cry a lot. That they're they they've got that emotional connection, and it, you know it's not a, a bad thing to cry. But for me, I, I very seldom cry. If I cry, as I said, it's usually the anger or if something's very upsetting to me. We went to see a, a movie last year uh, called The Father, which was about uh, dementia, and it was really not a film that I should have gone to watch. I went to see with the family. And I, when, when the lights came up, my, my kids uh, gave me a hug. Here we go again. <clears throat> okay, I think, I think I'm all right now. Oh, there's gonna be uh, lots of uh, little mum tears uh, in eyes today. But I had a little bit of tears at the weekend that came up in connection with the, the ice swim challenge. Now, the, you know me, I, lo I love my winter swimming, my winter bathing. And it wasn't because I wasn't prepared for the challenge. I was on home turf. Um, the, the, we actually swam at the place that, that we, I, I swim with my uh, Copenhagen Blue Tits Chill Swimmers group. And I know the place where we're, we were swimming in lanes, so it was slightly different. But, uh, you know, I was on home territory, I was swimming the distance that I know that I can do, I know that I'm good at, and I was with my friends, it was Sue, uh, you know, my good friend Sue, who had, um, you know, encouraged us to, to take part once again in these things, and it's really good because it, you know, it, it gives you a goal to work towards, it pushes you a little bit, and we all need to be pushed from time to time, not, not pushed over the ed edge, but just pushed out of our our comfort zone and for me this was a real pushing out of my comfort zone being in competition now I'm, I'm, I'm going to mention the dressing your truth thing again I'm a type one and I when I enter a competition it's not because I'm going to win the medal or I'm going to do their best time it's because it's a fun thing for me oh there'll be a, a goodie bag and uh, you know, I'll be with friends and there'll be a little party feeling going on. I, I'm not taking part because I'm wanting to be standing up on the podium, you know, being number one. That, that's not my reason for entering it. And at these uh, swimming competitions, these are like, I always say, these are real swimmers. I, I'm not a real swimmer. I swim all the time, 
I swim in the cold water, but I don't have the technique. And, and to be honest, I'm not, and I wouldn't want to do more than like 50 meters, 100 meters in a pool. That, that's not my idea of fun. My idea of fun is swimming and being with others and being in the sea, being in my, uh, the place that I, I feel like is home. So when, when I go to these swimming competitions, suddenly I'm with people who are really um, trained and, you know, I, I, I've got such admiration for them because, you know, they've got the technique and the equipment and they're really super focused and challenged and they're challenging themselves. But I, I'm there for the fun. But I still get that <gasps> nervousness, especially when I'm with the kind of professional swimmers. And Sue gave me a little pep talk just before because she could see, you know, the tears were coming. Here it comes again. And she gave me a hug and she reminded me that even she gets nervous about these things. And you know, Sue, she, uh, you saw me um, helping her declutter in her basement and she had, you know, and I've got a few uh, swimming medals, but she's got, she's, you know, boxes of medals from participating in triathlons and Ironman competitions all over the world and she leads groups and she's a swimming teacher, she's a swimming coach and she gets people involved in these things but even she can still feel those nerves before a competition and that was such a, a relief for me to hear that and I just needed that final little thing that you know what it, it's okay to feel that <gasps> Um, you know, for, for me, it's like kind of that knot in the stomach, you know, I, have, I felt nauseous in the morning, I couldn't really eat anything. And I, I kept on telling myself that, you know, you love doing these things. I mean, you, you've seen the, the, the videos that I've made before. And the euphoria that comes when I am in the water, actually, when I'm, not even once the race is finished, but when I'm in the moment, when I'm, I'm doing my, uh, when I'm actually swimming, that euphoria that comes, that it is worth everything. And also, of course, when you come out of the water and there was a wee girl who, who puts the, the medal around your neck. I'll, I'll put the footage at the end of this video. And after that, it, it's, such, it's such an uplifting moment to be with the people that I love, you know, the, the ladies that we, we share these, these really precious moments with. And it just inspires us to, to move forward. Um, you know, others will go on to do longer races, want to race faster. But, but for, for me, it, it was a real eye-opener this weekend that I need to do more of that. I need to do more of getting out of my comfort zone. And, and maybe you're the same. Maybe you're the same with things that are going on at home, whether that is working on... Uh, clutter and you're, you've got that feeling about you know opening that drawer and, and what is in that drawer I, I can tell you what's in that drawer because that's that's where I keep my pom poms and my timer for, for when I'm doing um coaching calls here in my office but but think about that but you know we, we need to also look at these feelings and say it, it's all right that that's that's just a part of it that, that that's part and parcel of the process but not to let us stop, you know, we've got to be careful that it doesn't, just because we have that feeling, it doesn't mean that we can't get past it, that we have to think about, okay, why are we feeling nervous? Say it's about the clutter, okay, it's, we're feeling nervous because, and then you might think, okay, well, you know, at the moment I'm thinking I need to do all the house, and, no, no, we're, we're just going to break it down to little uh, steps where we're just going to set at our timer and do 15 minutes. So if you're looking for help, you know, with the uh, with the things in the house, uh, if you're looking for help with your um, exercise challenges, I've got ton, tons of playlists uh, here here on, on YouTube. And uh, one of the questions that came up this week, and, and I get this again and again, often at, at the start of the year, is how do I keep so uh, slim? I've, 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 got, I've had the same body shape since I was, I don't know, what, 15 years old. Um, and the, I eat in moderation, everything in moderation. I don't follow any kind of um, diets or intermittent fasting. I eat in moderation. I eat the good stuff. I eat um, 
the sweets at, at, the, at the weekend, you've seen the family, you know, the family snack basket that, that we do. Uh, but I am active on a daily basis and that, that has been key for me to, I don't know, maintain the, the, the shape that I have. And I'm actually in better shape than I was than when, let me see, I'm 54 now. I can tell you, because my doctor, my asthma doctor told me this, my um, lungs have improved because I'm doing that uh, daily exercise, whether it's going for a run or out on my bike. I'm, I'm out on my bike all the time in, in the village. It's, that's part of Danish life uh, or, or the, the swimming. So for, for me, it's not to do with uh, what I'm eating or it is to do with what I'm eating. I'm eating in moderation. And if you want to know what I eat, I post every week on my blog, denmark.com. You can see our menu plan. Anyway, let's get into talking about food. Uh, a kitchen object. Okay, here we go. Right, and I'm going to be, give you a couple of clues. Okay, here's the object. Let's see. It's made of wood. It's carved. And it basically looks like a wooden stick. Like a, like a drumstick. Like a really big knitting, knitting needle. Okay, who's got a guess about what that could be? Have you ever seen one of these before? I had never seen one of these before, I'm being honest with you. Now, okay, I'll tell you where, I'll give you a few clues. Is there where you might, where, where this comes from? This object, um, should I tell you what it starts with? No. Anyway, it's something Scottish. It's a traditional Scottish kitchen object kitchen implement because I suppose it could look like a kind of a kitchen holder it's actually something that you use in the kitchen now what would you use that for and I'll, I'll tell you why I bought this I actually bought two of them I bought them as um, Christmas uh, presents I bought one for my daughter this is my daughter's one I'm, I'm seeing her this week and the other one I bought for Vibeke now, what do my daughter and Vibeke have in common? Okay, any guesses? Mm -hmm. And uh, th there's a bit of a funny story to this because my friend, uh, one of my new friends, Danielle, from the Copenhagen Blue Tits Swimmers Group, she had posted on Facebook that her sister-in-law, who's in England, makes these. She's got an Etsy shop and, and I was looking, I thought, Oh, you know, um, sustainable gift. She's got her own little woods uh, where she gets the wood from and she, she, she carves these herself uh, with pedal power, you know, and an old lathe. Anyway, I, I got them sent to mum because they couldn't be sent to here in Denmark. I got them sent to my mum in Edinburgh. <laughs> and then you know what happened? Our flight, we, we couldn't go to Edinburgh because of restrictions and the pandemic. And then I said to my brother, can you, can you send them here? Okay, so my brother sends them and guess what? <laughs> they got stopped at uh, customs. And, and it wasn't because he hadn't filled out the forms properly. You know, there's forms now because of Brexit. Anything coming from uh, going into the UK or coming out is, is such a hassle for us uh, here in Europe. Anyway, it kind of got stopped at customs and I get this letter you know, kind of asking me what it was. So anyway, I had to, to write to the customs men here and explain what it was. Okay, I'm going to give you three, two, one. Okay, this is a porridge spurtle, and I'm going to spell that for you. S-P-U-R-T-L-E. A porridge spurtle. Now, this is a traditional Scottish stick. It's like a wooden spoon, but with no uh, base on the end of it. And it's for stirring your porridge and apparently you've got to have one of these if you want to have a porridge without lumps. Now I, I'm going to be honest with you, I had never heard of a spurtle. I mean I, I left Edinburgh when I was 21 and I'm like 54 years old now. I'd never heard of a spurtle and I said to my mum, have you heard of it? Oh yes, her granny had one. I, my mum never had a spurtle and I don't remember my granny ever having a spurtle, but my, my mum's granny had a spurtle. 
So have you ever seen one? Have you tried using one? V Vibic actually sent me uh, an, a message the other day and she said, oh yeah, no lamps. So, so there you are. And, and, and I think one of the reasons it may have become more popular, I don't know, in the last 10 years is because of the rise of all these uh, you know, uh, cooking programs and um, you know, uh, cooking is a lot more on, on the TV and uh, in the media these days. But there you go, a spurtle. Do you have one? Do you, do you think that you might need to, to get one? Um, and in a way, I'm kind of thinking, oh, maybe I should have ordered one for myself, but maybe I'll, I'll ask my daughter if I can try it before, before she gets it. So there you are. A wee bit of fun for you today. And then let's have a little look at what happened at the ice challenge at the weekend. Just checking out the Ben. I'm glad I'm not in with the seaweed. I'm in lane one, which is the one furthest over there. Lane one, lane two, lane three. And we've even got the baskets. We'll be taking off our clothes, probably putting in the baskets. And then what usually happens at swimming competitions is that the, uh, the people who work here, they take those and take them to the other end so that you can get your, your warm clothes back on. So anyway, a little look at the harbour. And I think I'm feeling ready. I was a wee bit teary just before. <laughs> it's probably still a bit now, as you can hear in my voice, but um, got a big hug from Sue. And I know I can do this. I've done it hundreds of times before, but uh, it's just pre-race jitters. We had snow on the morning of the competition. It was freezing cold in the morning and, and I know my friends were thinking oh no they were really not looking forward to it but I love swimming in the snow I think it's just the, the most fantastic thing ever anyway the snow stopped uh, the snow and the sleet and actually the sun came out by the end of the day Monica what what do you got today this is my best and most favorite Christmas present and we we all think so too we all want them yeah my daughter actually hand painted these for me for my Christmas present those are fantastic they are absolutely and everybody wants these blue tits yes, oh she's even she put your initials on yes, them so her initials and then M for Monica yeah or so, wonder yes. woman if you put them upside down Wonder Woman with a W. Sure, so <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get stripped off and let's get into the water. You can see me swimming. Here's my race, and it, my, my friend Erica, Erica from America, she she filmed uh, my race. So thanks, to Erica, for that. Let, let's have a look at that. <laughs> Go, Diane! Well done! And then if you want to come into the water with me, the water was 3 degrees Celsius. I'll need to look up what that was, but uh, to, to be a, a nice swimmer, the water must be under 5 degrees Celsius. Um, anyway, if you, if you want to come into the water with me and hear what it's like when you're swimming, I had my GoPro on. Um, so here we go, go, go. Yes, tuck.
Everybody's uh, out of the water. We've got our clothes back on, having some something hot to drink. Cecilia had some blueberry soup with her, and then we're getting on to the champagne uh, and all the snacks. I'll just give you a wee look here, and the sun has actually come out. Look at that on this January cold, cold January Saturday afternoon. Ooh, and look what Sarah's made. Polar bears! Oh, well, sorry, I was. <laughs> I, I always say polar bears. Penguins, penguins. But cheers with the champagne. Cheers! <sighs> oh my goodness, what a day! That medal! <laughs> and it's just been another fantastic day. One of those uh, days that I start out feeling. Why on earth am I? Why on earth am I doing this? But I'm, I'm glad the the ladies were there for me. That Sue pushed me into it again, and um, just the most fantastic thing. So I hope that that gave you a, a bit of fun today. Um, a, a hug if if you need one today. Remember, if you're feeling those thoughts, the kind of knot in your stomach. Let's have a look at it. What, what is causing that? Is it the distress about clutter? Is it because you are um, lacking some kind of uh, structure in your daily routines to keep you afloat, to keep you moving forward? Uh, and I'm here for you. So anyway, I'm going to get back uh, to work. Here's my medal. Woohoo! Go me. Live long and prosper. May the ice swimming hooga be with you and I'll see you very soon with a rap rap rap. Okay, bye for now.